being a mom is amazing, but it's also really hard. And so you're growing and you're not necessarily parts of you who you were before you still have there and parts of you, you're growing into this new version of who you are. Mm. And so I, I have to tour if I choose to, I want and have to tour and have to do all these things to, to tap into literally who I am at the core of me mm -hmm. and then to fill, you up. To fill me having yeah. nothing to do with anybody else, but I can be the best mom I can be if I've stood on stage once a month, hopefully more, but if I've stood on stage once a month and communicated with other people, that fills me up. Mm. I can do that and come home and um, handle doing the dishes for the 19,000th time because I can look back and be like, oh, I did my, mm -hmm. my heart's desire, you know. Hey, I'm Lauren Lucas. I'm obsessed with learning and I live for true authentic connection. I'm a wife, a working mom, professional singer-songwriter, and an instructor of songwriting at my alma mater, Belmont University. You could say that life's a little full. I'm always looking for a way to sneak in some me time with great friends, good food, and meaningful conversation. Here we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the hard, and the wonderful. My guests include well-known recording artists, hit songwriters, film directors, wellness coaches, and creative entrepreneurs. Plus, we throw in a delicious beverage, an easy weekend recipe. Think of it like happy hour, but better. I'm Lauren Lucas. This is The Happiest Hour. It's the happiest hour when I'm with you. It's the happiest hour. Let's raise our glasses to doing this crazy life together. Keeping it real can't get much better. As long as I'm with you, it's the happiest hour. Oh, a quick PS. My plan is to bring you a full season of the happiest hour. But let's be honest, as a busy working toddler mom, work-life balance, at least for me, can be a challenge sometimes. So I might skip a week here and there. Here's what that means. No matter how you enjoy the happiest hour, whether it's through the YouTube live video or through your favorite podcast app, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for the latest episode. That way, you won't miss a thing. Today, my guest is a recording and touring artist. You have heard her songs on the radio. She is open for legendary artists like James Taylor and Ronnie Millsap. She hosts her own YouTube series and podcast. So I cannot wait for you to meet Risa Binder. Okay. Cheers, Risa Binder. Cheers. So glad you're here. Thank you. Oh, mm. <laughs> and this yummy French toast. What like, do you call it? Like a French toast latte. So good. Mm. I don't do a lot of lattes. I'm a very simple coffee. Like, like coffee, like coffee mate. No, I do need some coffee mate. Okay. But I'm just not a very like latte person. I, no, I don't know. Like things like cheesecake. I want, I like plain cheesecake, but this is good. I'm just I like plain, plain cheesecake too. I'm just uh, like a plain Jane. I think I didn't realize that you could combine these things. I, I, until coming to Nashville, actually. That's mm. where I first, Fido was the first place that I ever had a latte like this. Yeah. And they call it their local latte. So that's kind of where the inspiration came from. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, it's delicious. Oh. It's delicious. <laughs> um, okay. So you and I have written together and collaborated over the years quite a bit, really. And i um, very honored you cut a song of mine called Burning Down the Dark that mm -hmm. I wrote with Sarah Beck. Yeah. Which, strangely, you and Sarah didn't really know each other, I don't think but you end up being from the same town so we're right? from the same town we went to different high schools okay we knew i knew of her through heather her sister because yeah. i did shows with her at the dinner theater where i grew up yes but i, I didn't realize but that. i didn't connect it okay and when i met you i i didn't know that you all were friends but i it was such a small world and since sarah played a couple of sarah's amazing and so mm -hmm. are you but she played at, in our town, there was a venue that closed during COVID. It was called the Soundry. Mm -hmm. And we got to play separately. But then we sang together. I don't know if you know this. No. We, oh. And I, I may have a video somewhere. I saw a backstage rehearsal yes. video. That's awesome. And, you know, she's amazing and can sing anything just yeah. like you. And um, so anyway, we got to sing that song together. Oh, live. that's great. A couple times, actually. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I love your version of Burning Down the Dark. Mm -hmm. And was always very honored that you cut that song. And you and I have written a lot together as well. And so. Oh, and you're a fantastic writer. So I'm just curious. I'm <laughs> well, you are. Okay. You are. And so did you write pr 
prior to coming to Nashville, and and how do you continue to improve your craft? I just think we're never done learning at all what we do, and so yes, I would write. So I think it's in your it's in your blood. I think it can be taught, but I think it's in your blood too, mm -hmm. right? And like I tell the story a lot, but I'll share it with you too. So the first time I ever wrote a song. The first, I realized that music was magic like so young mm. and I grew up next door to all boys so this was maybe when I was six five or six five or six and there were boys but I really wanted a girl to move next door and I'll never forget this there's like a little we had a little playroom and there was a window facing outside and I would be like how I wish a girl would move next door I would make oh, you like, just sing it just sing it wow and the next day five girls <laughs> moved next door and I thought music did that I was like music is is magic music did that my song did that and I, that from wow. that day i was like so then i just would always write songs about like boys i had crushes on or something like that and it was so embarrassing because my mom would be like who's that about and i'm like i don't know you know at the piano um so yeah so it's, and so did you will those boys to some of them maybe I, yeah. think, I do think there's energy to what you write i do but for like sure. for, sure. you know but some are older and i don't think they ever noticed me but it was it's it's very much a way to let out your feelings um but i didn't know you know you do it because it comes from you but you don't really know or if you're good or not and i don't think you really care if you're good or not mm -hmm. and you're just doing it mm -hmm. and then the reactions that you get are just like oh but it wasn't until i started coming to nashville which i'm just jumping in like i lived in new york and i would sing these at these open mics but I came to Nashville and it was all Garth Brooks writers, but not Garth Brooks. He mm. didn't come. And the guy, one of the guys, I think it was King Williams who wrote mm. the dance. I could be wrong, but I think it might've been him played the song and it meant so much to him and him as the writer singing it changed my life. And mm. I was like, how do you do this better? How do I do this better? And so, you know, so the songwriter story, the songwriter's heart is what gotcha. Yeah. Was it the Bluebird or? Where? It was the Bluebird. The Bluebird yeah. My first time at the Bluebird. Okay. Uh, it was a songwriter around all Garth Brooks writers. And apparently a person sitting next to me had said, Garth came in last year when this happened. So I was like losing my mind. Oh, he did wow. not show up. And that is okay, Garth. That is okay. Uh, because <laughs> it, it showed me that the songwriter singing it matters sometimes even more than the artist mm. singing it, in my opinion um because then you can see where the root of the story actually came from mm -hmm. and then it's the artist's job to make the story their own if they didn't write it right yeah okay. so yeah then... and transcend other people's stories yeah yeah for sure okay that's that's a beautiful story and the bluebird is so magical so magical oh my gosh it is so magical i I don't know. I don't normally. I don't know about you, but I don't normally. I don't get nervous now when I'm singing for a bunch of people. I don't. But I remember thinking when I get to sing here, which ended up happening, I will be so nervous, and I was. Mm. I won. That circle of, is, makes yeah. me very nervous. Yeah. No, same, <laughs> yeah. same, same, same. Uh, you are. I mean, it, it exudes out of you in just these first few minutes. I'm, I'm sure everyone can tell you are such a light. Where, where does that? come from and and what is your life philosophy if you have one you're you're so positive and and hard working and you have perseverance where does that come from in you i love you i'm trying not to cry <laughs> i don't i just i honestly i think the women in my family are very strong kind hard working people mm. and i think it actually i think it comes from both of my grandmothers my nana was a painter okay. um, and she <laughs> I think she lived to be 98 but she lied about her age dated younger men was a belly dancer <laughs> I have and, a great aunt who was a little similar, bit like okay. that yeah <laughs> and I still say she's still here just in another way she's mm. just here. so the love of telling stories came from her because she mm. would come over and be like I have a story to tell you guys and I'm like whoa and it would always be hilarious and I just couldn't wait to hear what my nana had to say daddy and then my grandmother, my who my daughter's named after, her name is Lena, and she lived to be 99 or something insane. Wow. And she was from Russia and very strong. She lost her husband at a young age and never remarried, but was the kind of woman that would like get on the floor and like scrub the floors. Mm -hmm. Like, and I was like, whew, this woman. And she was just so old school in the best way possible, but she's just so strong to me. So I think the love of life came maybe from my nan and my mom. I should just, my mom is just positive person. Mm. And so sometimes I used to have a younger sister and we would talk and be like, where does this come from? Because not every day is lollipops and rainbows, but something mm. I learned from my nana is you can find that 
in every day if you look for it. Mm -hmm. Not every day will hand that to you, but it's there mm -hmm. if you choose to look for it. And some days maybe it's too hard to look for, but most days for whatever reason, I find it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just tell another funny story. Like, <laughs> I, would, I love this story. So I, I go back, I'm, I lived in Brooklyn full time for about 10 years. And now I go back and forth because it's still so inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. But I remember one time I had been, bro someone broke up with me. I was so sad and I was on the subway Apparently, I was smiling. I don't know what my face does. I was really happy, and people were like smiling at me, and I'm like, "Why? I'm I, I didn't have something on my face. yeah." I was like, "What?" But the funny part is, is I didn't know. Like, I feel like God sets you up. I just do for joy, even when you're not expecting it. So I was so sad. And New York is a place where you can feel like it's weird. You may be alone, but you're not alone simply because there are other bodies hanging mm. around. I was sitting next to a mariachi band. I had no idea. So all of a sudden, I'm like really like in tears and I hear like rah, 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 rah. like, like there's some how did I miss the guy with the sombrero sitting next to me oh and like so that the tears into la like full-on laughing that like I feel like God set it up like Risa you this is not yeah. a day you can you can cry but then get happy because life is still happening and yeah. I think that that's something that that my my mom and my nana and grandma taught me <laughs> well it sounds like you have you have become through those role models you've become attuned to Look for it, as you say. I look for it. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> that's important. So, in addition to music, you—it seems to me, at least, that you also look for ways to connect with your audience, your fans, your listeners, in lots of different ways. You have this incredible entrepreneurial spirit. You do more than write and tour. You've toured with some fantastic artists. You were on the road for a long time with Ronnie Millsap. Opening yeah. shows for Ronnie. So I still do that. Ronnie, actually, like we're first base. Yeah, like well, he first would be basis. if he met you. He would love to meet you. No, he he was amazing. He is amazing, and I have some shows coming up actually. Oh, him, great! Well. Yeah, great. Well. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. And so, and what else? Because you you have some different YouTube series. You you've just got creativity in so many different areas of your life. So. Where does that entrepreneurial spirit come from? Um, I think a lot of different places, but something I, that I think is like a through line. I had one teacher. I think teachers are miraculous people. Um, I had an acting teacher slash director in Maryland. She's very actually famous. Her name is Toby Orenstein. And in Maryland, she's like, she's a is superstar. Is that the to Toby Center Toby Theater. Theater? Yeah. Which I've been to oh. see Heather. Oh, yeah. Years ago, and the show. So I started doing Toby's when I was six years old, okay. um, and then would do it throughout my life. But something that she said that has always stuck with me that I brought into songwriting and everything is: it's our job as creative people, actors, singers, painters, and to tell our story, to tell mm. the story. Mm. Our job is to tell the story. She and it's ingrained in me because she said it from when I was six: tell the story, right? Mm. And so, as a creative, we tell. Our, my job is to tell my truth, you know, and so my truth is not just songwriting and singing, but maybe it's finding out. I love people so much. I want to hear your story. I, I find truth in, and I find inspiration in who you are truly mm -hmm. and like what your story is. And so I thought about as a creative, like besides my craft or things that are getting better and trying to learn, like who do I want to sit next to and who do I want to learn from and who inspires me? And, mm -hmm. and those are the people I want to hear their stories. And really, I just... I really do truly love life and literally putting my feet on the ground in the morning I'm aware is a blessing in itself. And so, okay, I'm alive today. Uh, I want to hear your story. Who, who can I learn from and soak up? And so part of having, I think, the inspiration to write a song is the same inspiration I get from also hearing stories from people that mm -hmm. I'm curious about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, that feeling, that inspiration is so important and it's something that at, at times in my life, I have almost pushed away against, like it's, like for some reason, having that joy and inspiration was a, is a bad thing, or I'm supposed to like work, it's supposed to feel more like work, you know? And I've, I'm coming into a season where I'm like, no, that's like the good stuff, you know? And you really <laughs> lean into that. I do. Yeah, I, I do. Because I feel like life is a roller coaster ride. I, I say this about people's partners too, like the person you're with shouldn't feel like drama because there's drama that surrounds just waking and sleeping the things that come into your life that you choose to take in or not. Mm -hmm. So like it's, it's a, it's such a, I keep saying blessing in this interview, but like it is to have that inspiration, to be able to get it out on paper, out on painting, out, however mm -hmm. you want to get it out. Mm -hmm. It's therapy. It's therapy. Yeah. yeah for, sure. for sure. Yeah. Okay. So you are a busy woman. You're a, a wife, a mom, 
a musician, a writer, a host. You host a podcast. You host YouTube series. Um, you tour. Uh, you, you're a friend. You're a community member. I mean, like the hats, the hats we all wear, right? It's you crazy. wear a lot as well. It's well, <laughs> um, what I want to know from you to help me and, and others who are watching, especially I would say for working moms, what, I mean, advice, do you have advice or tips on how to balance wearing all the hats and, and what does balance look like in your life? It is a active, um, failing and winning situation each day. <laughs> Fair uh, and so, uh, and so I think, uh, okay. I have so much, I mean, I guess advice if people want to hear it for like new moms, even though my daughter is four, but I still feel like I'm living in new mom land and I may always be a new mom since I only have one mm. and I've never mm. had a four year old before. Yeah. I've never had a five. I'm like, okay. But especially being a creative, but a couple things. First, when I met Liel, when she came into the world, the first thing that surprised me about being a mom is that she's mine, but she's not mine. She is mm, the world's. Mm -hmm. And I get her for a sweet, beautiful amount of time. Also crazy. And I, we can, you can think I'm nuts, which I'm, part of me probably is, but like we have, her and I have done this before. We've done this before in some other way. I have no idea how maybe mm. she mothered. Truthfully, I think she mothered me in another lifetime. Mm. So it's a weird knowing. And so it is my honor and it doesn't mean that it's always easy. Like I'm like, I'll change her diapers literally in this lifetime. Cause I think in another one, she did that for me. Mm. There's some I've known her before thing. Wow. But, so that being said on the hard days, it's easier knowing. And it, what's weird is that she has said recently, you know, kids say straight, wait till you wait, just wait. <laughs> They'll say things and you're like, what did you just say? Like she's named after my grandmother and uh, she was sick two weeks ago. And so I let her sleep in the bed with me and she was like, Hey, your grandma came to visit today. And I'm like, really, what is she saying today? And it just wow. fills my heart. Cause I'm like, I just let it go. Cause I'm like, yeah, come on. Let's go. I love that stuff. Right. Okay. So I'm yeah. side note, but um, being a mom is, I feel like um, being a mom is amazing, but it's also really hard. And so you're growing and you're not necessarily, Parts of you who you were before, you still have there. And parts of you, you're growing into this new version of who you are. Mm. And so I I have to tour if I choose to. I want and have to tour and have to do all these things to to tap into literally who I am at the core of me. Mm -hmm. and then To fill you up. To fill me, having yeah. nothing to do with anybody else. But I can be the best mom I can be if I've stood on stage once a month, hopefully more. But if I've stood on stage once a month and communicated with other people, that fills me up. Mm. I can do that and come home and um, handle doing the dishes for the 19,000th time because I can look back and be like, oh, I did my mm -hmm. my heart's desire, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and so if, and I sometimes have to write, I do write it all out. I love to write, obviously, but I love to write sections of things like, you know, what will fill my heart up for service for mm -hmm. others? What mm -hmm. fills my heart up for business? Uh, you know, I still, I mean, I'm in the throes of like, paying for preschool as an artist that's like not famous, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like figuring out financially what will fill me up and having that align. It has to be something musical. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. staying true to the core of who I am um, and being that mom and um, is very challenging, but fulfilling on days that I get it right. And I do not always get it right, but when I get it right, it feels really, really good. Yeah, yeah for <laughs> sure, for sure. And I love, Sarah Beck actually was, before I had my child, her, her kids now are, I think, six and 10, but uh, I might have that. They're around there. Um, and I remember when her first was born, her, she was saying something very similar, which is that it's, they're ours, but they're not ours, you know? And I, and I feel so much that way. Do you feel it? It, it's like you are entrusted with this soul for however long you get with them and nothing is promised. And you just, you have to let, they are the worlds. You're right. And they have to be themselves and they have to learn on their own and a lot of, a lot of things. And we are just here to just guide them. And in my experience, the you know, the more I can not get in the way, <laughs> the That's better for that, you feel soul, that way. I think. <laughs> but then that, but then do you, don't you feel love on a, there's a different now love. There's a different love on another level where like truly when my, when Liel is saying like, 
mommy, she says, will you love me forever? And I say, actually, I will love you beyond forever mm. because a mother's love, and I know a dad's love is probably very similar, but I'm not a dad, but I'm a, sure goes be, it literally transcends death. Like mm. I will find you mm. and be with you beyond what you can see. Mm. And I, I know it. And so, and yeah. so it's true. So I would say, oh, I'm, I say, yes. And I'll love you beyond forever too. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so, yeah. yes. Have you written that? No, but we should. Oh, let's let's write try it. it. <laughs> All right. Done, done, and done. Okay. So let's, let's shift just a little bit and get kind of girly here. So okay, um, you're on the road, yeah. you are a mom. So I don't know about you, but like there are days where I'm sweatpants, mom mode, athleisure <laughs> mode. And then there's like artist days. <laughs> so what are some of your favorite just products you cannot live without, whether it's mom stuff, beauty stuff, uh, like just some stuff you love. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, revisions I'm way into, um, and I, I learned that from too. Landon. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So thanks Landon. Yeah. Um, Landon. We love yeah, we do. And so revisions like kind of changed my world just because mm -hmm. it's this one thing that makes me feel like I'm put on. Like I used to do makeup more and now as a mom, I'm just like, if I have a show, I will put on eyeliner. But like I, if I don't, you know, so revisions is great. I've always been a Mac girl. Mac just mm -hmm. makes me Same. feel like I'm, I'm done without mm -hmm. looking crazy done. Um, and I've always been a natural person. So like when someone goes, this is just me. When someone goes to do my eyebrows, I know I'm like, please don't, just don't do it. Like, I'm like, I don't know why. Cause I just feel like, uh, less for me, less is more. And you want to look like yourself. I want to look like myself. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I get uh, that. But so TMI, I still have my maternity pants that I wear sometimes, which <laughs> they look like leggings. They're from, I don't remember, like in a pot or something like that. Yeah. But I know I need to let it go. But part of me is like, why would you, you can't tell like, they're so comfortable. <laughs> Side, but side, side, side note, what I love to do is run into little mom and pop boutiques that I feel are so great that mm -hmm. could like, um, that feel good. So I'm way into like Molly Green. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some new, there's we a, have one in 12 South, don't we? Uh, there's one, it's near there. So the one that I love, Shelby's the manager of it, and I'm obsessed with her, is um, is across from Fido. We're like apparently all my whole oh. world. Like, okay. But there's probably one in, in 12 South. It's might. expanding. Okay. Um, but they're great. Um, are they local? I should know this, I guess. But are they local to Nashville? They may have started. They're local to here, but they actually may have started in Knoxville. I can't remember which okay. one, but they they had a place in East Nashville that when the tornado came got mm -hmm. destroyed. So then they okay. reopened back in, across the street from Fido, yeah. where my whole world <laughs> <resort>. <laughs> Whatever. Um, actually, one of my here. This is what you do. You go to Fido. You pick up your French toast espresso yeah. latte. Yeah. And you go to Molly Green. Can we drink some more? Sure. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Mm, I do. So that's my thing is like having the 10 minutes of running into a store just to see what's new. Like you yeah. probably know is like, I just had a vacation. Yeah. What just happened? Yeah. And now Liel is way into it. I actually have to send you this video. She'll like try things on and she's starting to tell jokes and like the door of one of the uh, dressing rooms creaks. She's like, this door creaks. It's called Mr. Crackers. And like, just like, and I'm like, yes, she's getting her personality. So yes. And Early. also like mother, like daughter. I mean, that is such a recent thing to do, isn't it? Yes, totally. <laughs> but look, if I could get, I have not like literally hardly gotten my nails done when I can go do mm -hmm. that. It feels good. Like mm -hmm. just those little things. And on the road, like I'll bring my little case of makeup and like, there's nothing, there is truly nothing girly about being on the road, to be honest. I don't know if you'll but like you're, I'm yeah. usually in a car with a bunch of guys who I really admire and love. And I am, they call me the Panera tour because I have to stop at a place that truly will not wreck my stomach, but like before. Sure. Yeah. Um, have a semi-clean bathroom that you can actually change and put makeup in. Yes. Yeah. Depending on where you are. I have literally changed in a bathroom, which I'll, I'll maybe tell you, but like where I'm like, my head is touching one part and my tush is touching another part. I'm like, let's go. Like you just kind of oh, go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, like that is truly like living and feeling alive for me is like those you travel for like five hours to have the 45 minutes on stage or however long your set is. Um, and then, you know, you see who you're playing with and they're like your little fam. And yeah. um, I just, you can't beat that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, good. So lots of good tips and tricks and um, some products that we can try. So Mac, Molly Green. A Mac Molly Green revisions is like a game changer mm -hmm. yeah, for me. I love that sure. too. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So last question. This is what I ask. I ask this of all my guests and I'm curious what you're, what you think. So if it were all gone tomorrow, the, the touring songwriting, touring with Ronnie Millsap, you know, doing the music thing, 
what would you want people to know or what would you want to leave behind? Try not to get emotional because that is such a huge question. But I think it's something that I actually said at my Nana's funeral, which is truly to be a light. That's mm -hmm. your job. Oh, that, I feel like I was put on this planet to be a light. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, whether you just found my music today or you've known me for 10 years, hopefully you'll know me as a person that you can come to and talk to. Um, we can hang out and you'll leave maybe better than when you came because you were able to share with me a bit of your life or we've shared together. Um, but truly that um, we are all lights mm. and I just want to be remembered as one of them. So. Well, I think, I think you are, have already accomplished that and I know that you will continue to do so because that, I mean, it's just so apparent that you are a light. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for being here <laughs> today and being my guest. Yay. You can find Reese's music on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you stream and download your music. Um, on Instagram, on YouTube. She hosts several YouTube series as well. And I'll put all that in show notes below. So thanks for being here. Thanks, Thank Reese Finder. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, that was so much fun. I wish I could talk to my guests for hours. If you want more from The Happiest Hour 2, make sure you head over to laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour for the show notes, recipes, and products mentioned in the episodes. And you can learn how to access Happiest Hour bonus content. Oh, and if you're looking for a way to make true and authentic connections with other people who are music lovers, who want to carry on the conversations that are started on The Happiest Hour episodes, and who are friendly and supportive, join my exclusive online community. It's absolutely free and we would love to have you. I run fan contests there from time to time. I do free live stream concerts. The link is waiting for you at laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour. Until next time. <laughs>